I'll admit I'm a bit of a vitamin D skeptic. Studies that have linked the Wonder Vitamin to lower risk of colon cancer or improved cognition have largely been observational in nature and subject to confounding by things like sun exposure and diet. It's no wonder then that randomized trials of vitamin D supplementation have often been less than impressive. So it caught my eye when I saw a study appearing in PLOS Medicine that linked low vitamin D levels with an increased risk of multiple sclerosis. The study used something called Mendelian randomization to get around the confounding of vitamin D issue. Here's your 30 second primer. Let's say you have a biomarker, in this case low vitamin D levels, and you want to link it causally to an outcome, in this case multiple sclerosis. Now a lot of things affect vitamin D levels, but there may be genetic variants that confer a lifetime risk of low vitamin D. It would stand to reason then that carriers of these genetic variants would have a higher risk of multiple sclerosis down the road. Now one big caveat with Mendelian randomization is that there can't be pleiotropy. These genetic variants must be linked to multiple sclerosis only through a vitamin D pathway and not through any potential off-target effects. In short, Mendelian randomization is hard. How did the authors do? Well, not too bad. They started with a study of 30,000 individuals in whom they identified four single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, that were associated with low vitamin D levels. They then looked for these SNPs in a separate population of 14,000 individuals with multiple sclerosis and 24,000 healthy controls. Sure enough, those low vitamin D SNPs were more common in those with multiple sclerosis. Now they did a limited assessment for pleiotropy, but we have to point out that the SNPs occurred in genes that were associated with steroid synthesis and metabolism, so the potential for off-target effects is actually pretty high here. But if we're to believe the results, it would suggest that if you were to increase your vitamin D level by something like 10 to 50 nanograms per milliliter, your risk of multiple sclerosis could be cut in half. Now, of course, these results would have to be borne out in a clinical trial, and that's really the rub here, because genetically low vitamin D is a lifetime risk, and clinical trials generally only last a few years. In short then, what we find in this study of Mendelian randomization on vitamin D is similar to what we find in many Mendelian randomization studies, which is a paper that's somewhat long on methods, but short on actionable results. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.